Hey everyone, it's Nolan Wheeler with Sync, and we got Ron Thurston here, yep. Retail Pride author. Yep. So Thank awesome you. to have you in the booth. Thank you, appreciate it. quick demo today and just talk about how you know Ron's but your book talks about the accidental career we have in retail my accidental career turns to be turning into retail technology but I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that accidental career that I had prior and what I'm, we're trying to do is we're trying to make that retailer frontline environment just more friendly and more fun and engaging and efficient so all the things that they want yeah you know, the, and things like that really improve retention and hiring and the ability to attract talent give great tech in stores it's the first thing that new candidates are going to ask me yeah yeah so i can't wait to see it yeah and, and one of those things that's really challenging is that it can be kind of hard to find associates in stores especially these days can yeah so we're trying to alleviate that challenge and one of those challenges that we're trying to alleviate is we're sure locking up a lot of product these days you uh you and i chatted and then i think that next day you went and you had an experience of your own I, you know it was crazy because it was so fresh in my mind when you're explaining the problem and the potential solutions and then you're right i go into a, a home depot trying to buy a tool and then everything that you described as a pain point came true like right in front of my eyes and it was just it's so funny but at the same time the opportunity for what you have created here is yeah so at home depot you were, you weren't in and out quickly i imagine i was not i mean i'm happy to share but it required two different people two sets of keys trying to figure out which was the lock it required the person then taking the item i wanted to walk to purchase walk into the pos yeah and then drop that item off because the line to purchase the pos was a 15 minute wait so the whole point of the of their goal around containing the product and its journey from cage to pos but it failed multiple times yeah it's not a ding on, on home depot it's just no, 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 no. Yeah, we're all faced with this. Yeah, we are. yeah. But I understand why they're trying to control it. Yeah, I think it's also identifying problems in retail stores, whether it's people and technology and design. Like, let's identify the problem and come up with a solution. Yeah, because you came from stores, you know the problem. Yeah, or being here at NRF, I'm not sure that everyone has done the work in stores that you have to identify actually a real problem versus a problem that's perceived. Yeah, you, you, you use a perfect word, design. I don't think that Home Depot ever designed their stores to have locking showcases in all their aisles. I'm imagining, I wasn't around, but I'm imagining that first store, it was probably all available just to be picked up. Right. And now there's so many locking showcases. Locking showcases is actually warehousing. It's, if, if it's not something you can grab off the shelf, that's a, a, a warehouse yeah. uh, on the floor. So. Let's maybe jump into a demo right. and show what this looks like. Right. This is, we've got a QR code that we can just scan this Absolutely. one here that's easy. Claritin and some of those decongestant stuff, that stuff's been locked up in stores for a very long time. Right. So, Not my book, yeah, you just happen to have that out there. So, you're gonna then see on your phone what you see in the, in the locking showcase. Yep, here we go. And there we go. And we'll put this on screen so that people can follow along. So you're gonna request one of those Claritins. And the cool thing is, is that there are some retailers that are putting some paper card stock on the floor, but that's not reconciled to inventory. So there's a cool piece about making sure that we can provide that almost like online experience in store. So Ron really quickly has gone through there, very familiar like e-commerce, they didn't teach you and show you how to do that, but it said, you know, is this what you want? Add it to cart. And you've got a progress screen. So your item's on the progress screen. It says order under review. And I don't know if you heard that ding, but a ding came through on the Zebra. And I've got a Microsoft Teams adaptive cart. So I'm an associate in the store. I'm busy doing my task. I can continue my shopping. Totally. Like, I've given you the barcode on your phone. So you can go to a regular cash lane or you can go to a self-checkout and of course no integration required because the cash box doesn't know the difference between the, the barcode on the phone or the box so we're just moving you through without that friction and with this i could scan throughout my journey multiple you could items, you could qr codes in different parts of the store and then just take this to the left yeah and each one will be an individual barcode. you got it you got it yeah and it's like you're you think about it having a physical cart and then having the electronic cart. I'm building and helping you with your electronic cart because of all those items that are locked up. And it could be other items too. It could be like large items. Like you talked about Home Depot. 
a lot of big stuff, you know, barbecues and patio sets, you know, so it's not just the, the, the locking showcase stuff. I just think about it, if, if you can't put it in your cart and go to cash, this is something that you can leverage. So I've started to pick it as the associate, and it's all communicated through Microsoft Teams. You're getting updates on your phone, so it says that it's almost done. And it's important on Teams because this order's in progress and locked to my Teams account, so nobody else can go and pick that order for me. Because so many times, it's one or it's multiple or none that help customers. It's two people going to that radio call box or nobody going to that radio call box. So this is creating that accountability for the retail staff. I'm gonna put it in a locker because you asked for it in a locker. This is the fastest way for you to do this. These lockers are sitting at the exit of the store post cash. And on your phone right now it says that we're working on it. That door is gonna close. It stays a little bit more open because it's a trade show environment. So it's gonna close. And then we're gonna be able to move you over to paid. So traditionally in a real live store, you'd go over, you scan that code. It would move you over as paid in the POS. That door closed for the associate. So now that associate, you mentioned that the associate had to walk you to cash. We're no longer escorting you. I'm sure that didn't feel great to be escorted to cash. You also, yeah, I mean, I guess you didn't buy anything else. Maybe you would have bought something else if you could have made your way to cash? Yeah, there was, there was no ability to add on to the sale. Yeah. It's very transactional. This is the only thing that I could purchase. Otherwise, I would have to make a purchase and then come back into the store and reach my shop. Two trips. Two trips. Two trips. So your phone now shows that it's paid, yeah. and at the very top there, you've got the I'm here button. So you'll notice that you don't have to scan a QR code, you don't have to enter a code. As soon as you hit I'm here, that locker that we opened, illuminated blue, you're way ahead of me, you hit confirm and open because you felt safe in the environment to open it. You grabbed your drill, or in this case it was your Claritin, and out the store on your way with your bags of goods that you paid for at cash, and the item that was super expensive that we had to lock up. And um, for small items like this, what are stores doing as far as bags? Yeah, so I mean, this is a this locker. They're all the same size. We've got lockers with kind of bigger cubbies and smaller cubbies and those types of things. And about, I think the number that we had was about 87% of the majority of items that are in locking showcases actually fit in the, these locking showcases. And if they're too big and or or a bag necessitates them, or if it was multiple items, the store would put them in a bag and then into the locker for 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 the for the customer. Because that, that example that you gave of multiple barcodes, because you've got known device, we then continue to add that cart, put all those items in a bag, and we're, there's no receipt checking or anything, right? You, you're, we're, we're using a single-use token for you to open that locker because we leverage that payment confirmation, and you didn't have to walk up to a counter and say, here's my receipt and now pass me my stuff. But don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But don't get me wrong, you don't have to do lockers. And a lot of stores actually start with just dropping things at customer service. And then we would say, you know what? If you bought something in a locking showcase, please go to this check stand or that check stand. So there's a lot of, in, you know, we can, we can kind of be really quite flexible, especially with early days in using this new way to, to, to do commerce. So that payroll that was just not spent, you know, unlocking it, finding the keys, actually having two people walking it up. That person, you now, if you had the same amount of payroll, could spend out on the sales floor saying, hey Nolan, like, great to see you again. Can I help you find other things in the store? What do you shop for? Absolutely. So it becomes much more engaging versus pushing the button and trying to find something to stop. Yeah. So it goes from transaction to transformation. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, don't, I haven't heard from any retailers here at the show that there's going to be more labor available in the stores in the future. So this is all about doing more with less. And when you talk about that transaction time, the retail data that we have is that retailers are actually paying 12 minutes of employee time to go and help somebody locking showcase. And then when we do the pedometer and the time tracking, when we change this environment, we go to four minutes. So we have an eight minute saving per transaction. And we have retailers that are doing tens of thousands of transactions per store per year on this. So it's pretty compelling math. Eight minutes times 40,000 transactions is a, is a pretty sweet deal. And do you find the actual transaction yeah. time at POS? So if I took my phone and barcode scanned it, what's the reduction in that time? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're, you're it's kind of neat because we've been doing a lot of transactions like that already. Like if I go and scan my loyalty and rewards, I, I do it on my phone. So I just present my phone to the cashier. So you've got that phone ready and the cashier doesn't have to, you know, work with that bulky box or maybe it is a big item. Like maybe, you know, that's a challenge at POS too is that you've got like a barbecue. 
that's how, you know, so now you're leaving your post with the, with the mobile scanner and scanning it. Now you can present that barcode to the cashier. So you just gave me even more reason for retailers to do this. We just saved more time and cash. Exactly. Or self-checkout. Yeah. If needed. So yeah. the same thing would apply. I could do all of my work, barcodes in place, self-checkout, scan that like I did a whole group this morning. And then yes. I take this, it's filled with the bag for everything that I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. So it could be completely touchless and completely humanless if you wanted it to be. Yes. Yeah. But there's also the option to say it's it's transactional, yet we're gonna give back maybe some of that time to make this You've got it. Yeah. It's one of the most important is trying to respect people's time. And maybe post-COVID, it's the, the greatest thing that we've learned is how valuable time is. So if we can put time back in someone's day and we know that a retailer is going to leverage technologies like this, maybe we'll drive past that competitor store because we know there's some trip assurance to the experience as well as the inventory. Yeah. And you share with me this idea of things like patio furniture and barbecues, uh, which I thought was incredible, that through that checkout process, then I could deliver it for you, I could build it for you. I could sell you a warranty. Some of those things, as I just think about my journey you know, living on the road, there are so many times where I don't have the tools, yeah. I don't have the resources, I don't have a garage. And I would actually really enjoy that ability to then even schedule. Oh, I'd love for someone to come. Let's click through. When are they available? So all of that is done. And help out. Yeah. Yeah, so we try to take things and improve that experience. And, and the online folks kind of get to take this for, for granted. We get to do that bolt-on, you know, I think of like Amazon customers who bought this book, bought these books type of thing. And, and barbecue is a great example. You know, there's barbecue build. I very foolishly bought a barbecue and I decided that I would go in home and assemble the 400 parts. I don't think I had barbecue for about a week. So, so there's, the, there, there's delivery, there's assembly. And, and it's really interesting, about eight of every 10 people that phone us and say, we'd like to learn more about this technology, they're brands. Because their brands are saying, we've got our product, you're locking it in the locking showcase, there's not enough staff to facilitate it, we're actually starting to really feel the pain as well. So you start to think about the brand experience in terms of infant formula and educating the customer and all those pieces, it's really exciting. I mean, you had mentioned that there could potentially be, you know, as things are displayed differently, could say this is a theme of a wall. Yes. So there's no, you know, there's no boxes up there, and it's actually here's you know, everything you need to know about allergy, you know, allergy health. Yeah. Making up a term, but this idea of like here are your options. Here's some marketing for it. Maybe here's a little bunch you can scan. Them. Yeah. But all of it. So it actually could reduce um, the amount of space it takes to fill on the sales floor itself. Yeah. I mean, and that's where we see this. People, you know, the stores that are doing this, they can add some POP to an existing locking showcase fixture, and they can start crawling. They can start to transform this bad call button experience, and they can move it into digital. The next part of that is then taking the extra inventory out of these locking showcases and going to display only. We call that presentation showcases. And now you fill that showcase to show the product and demonstrate it, but it's only a single facing, and you build it once, and then you never touch it ever again, except for a plano change. The, the really smart, kind of last where we're kind of getting to with some brands and some retailers is they say, well, why would we even have that ugly locking showcase and that single facing presentation showcase at all? Think infant formula. Why wouldn't it be better to be able to actually be able to guide our customer to say, this is what we would recommend. This is the, the, the sex of the, uh, of, the, of the baby. This is the, the, the weight of the baby. This is the weeks of age. And, and it actually provides some guidance and some coaching on that. And we've had conversations about even turning that into a subscription. We know that you're gonna need an infant formula. We know that it's going to probably wanna change through the time period. And because that sale originated in a store and was part of the journey of the payment, we can have reciprocity of the retailer doing that work and then the brand getting that recurring revenue, but we can actually kick back to the retailer because we can tie it digitally of that digital experience and sort of then turned into an online experience. It's the first time I think you can actually show reciprocity on brands going direct to consumer. That's really interesting. And you're right, I think it's, it's that channel-less experience that I think is a big conversation yes. at NRF. Yeah. That the customer expects every brand to be as seamless in every point of their transaction. Yeah. And I think what we've learned in some of these spaces for these product categories is in fact it's not seamless. It's not. You know, that I can't order Claritone on Amazon. Yes. You can. Yes. Uh, yet 
if I am a responsible consumer and say, well, I actually don't need someone to drive to clear it to me or fly it to me. I can go in New York City and go walk away, and walk in. Yeah, I've walked in to a CBS and it's locked up. Yeah. And then the whole thing falls apart. I think it's actually, there's a, in my point of view, an enormous sustainability conversation. Yeah. That it's reducing some of that churn. It's reducing the amount of potential bags that we use. It's reducing paper because you're doing it all digital. All of it, for me, there's every point of this conversation, there's a, there's like this goodness of information. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if I can have my last call out, and I'll leave it to you to close this off, I saw Michael Dubin walking around. So Michael Dubin is the founder of Dollar Shave Club. 2011, I believe, is when Dubin founded Shave Club. And the, his, his story, he's, he's got some incredible content. I mean, his commercials were the funniest I've ever seen. But he said he went to a, a retailer to buy shaving product in 2011. He hit the call button. And in the locking showcase was the shaving product, but also some embarrassing stuff that they, where it was high risk and they're like, well, we only got one locking showcase, so we'll put that in there too. And he tells this story about kind of like hiding because the thing kept going across the, the intercom saying customer service to this location. And he's like, well, I don't want people to think that that's what I'm getting. But he did also didn't want to be too far away because he didn't want to miss the associate when they came. And that was the genesis for Dollar Shave Club. I'm sure it's on YouTube somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. But you're right, it's, it's those, there was a problem that he solved. Yeah. And this, the actual problem was not worse. Yes. You know, there's a lot of conversation in around about shrink and loss prevention and safety and what it means, particularly as a drug business. Yeah. The impact yeah. That, that some of that has had on their necessity to close doors. Yep. And so I think this is phenomenal. Cool. I think this has multiple uses. Yeah. I think it has the ability to transform an entire product. Us too. Yeah, us too. All right. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right, everybody.